When you're dealing with continuous distributions, one of the things you always want to be able to know thrown a new distribution is what is its expected value um, and what kind of variance does it, does it exhibit over time. So it's one thing to be able to plot it out over time and calculate the probability in any given interval. Uh, but often you'll be doing calculations where the main thing you want to know is simply just something based on the average. How, how long does it take for this product on average to fail or on average um, how many customers will walk in the door per hour. So you need to be able to do that calculation. Uh, let's do an example right now, if we can, uh, for a Weibull calculation, just to see how that works. Because the equations for these things can be quite intimidating. Um, you know, the equation for the, the mu value um, is such that some people shy away from it because of the complexity of the equation. So I'd like to just talk about that for a minute and show that um, it's really not as bad as some people think um, as they go through the process. Um, working this out. So let's assume we have a Weibull distribution, have maybe an alpha of 2 and a beta of uh, 3. Um, just, just to be able to talk in terms of a standard problem we might go through and how would we do that. So the trick to doing this is to take it slow. Don't try to anticipate and jump through the equation too fast uh, because some of it is simple arithmetic, yes, but some of it is the application, often in the case of Weibull, of a gamma function where there are rules and things to be applied. So what I recommend people do is always start by just writing out the basic equation uh, for the E of X. So beta times the gamma function of 1 plus 1 over alpha alpha. Um, and that is the expected value uh, for a Weibull function, regardless of what alpha and beta are. So start by writing out the equations so that you know you're in the right ballpark as you go through. And then, without solving any arithmetic, go ahead and fill in the values you've got. So I know my beta is going to be 3 times the gamma function of 1 plus 1 over alpha, which is 2. Uh, so I just take that very neutral step of writing out uh, what's going on here. Then I start to reduce some terms. Maybe I'll overdo it for the sake of drama here, but three times the gamma function of one and a half when I add together those two terms. Um, so I can I can look up the rules for the gamma function, which uh, there are typically three of them going on, and you know the gamma of alpha is equal to alpha minus one times gamma the gamma of alpha minus one. So the very basic rule of how to handle that, since I have a a function for my gamma that is greater than one, I can apply that rule here to say okay, so three uh, one less than this would mean by one minus alpha, which is times that. I better indicate that so I don't get my numbers wrong. Um, times the gamma of 1 minus that, which is 1 half. So I can apply that rule going through. Now, if I take that to the next step, obviously I know the 3 times 1 half is uh, 1.5. Uh, the gamma of 1 half is in fact the square root of pi. That's one of the rules of doing the gamma function. You, you can't calculate that. You just have to look it up. If you've got Excel, there's a gamma function. You can say equal gamma 1 half. Um, and you'll get that value out. But it just helps to remember um, that value as you go through. And then if you simply do the math, you'll find that 2.658, if I've done my math correct, um, to some number of decimal places, is the expected value of the function. So if I know my error rate on my Weibull is a Weibull distribution with an alpha of 2 and a beta of 3, and someone says, well, what's the average, what's the expected value you'll get out of that? The answer will be 2.658. And the units will be whatever units the original measure was in. So if I'm measuring hours till failure, it's 2.658 hours. Um, but so basically the ability to do that math, you'll notice because of the gamma function, it's not quite as simple as plugging the values into an equation. But in fact, if you're using Excel, it is because there are built-in functions for looking a lot of that up. You've got to be able to apply that logic uh, to know what the average value is at all times.